Elena, the the burning question after that previous information about GOS is what 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 do you think are the key benefits of beta GOS? So it's a prebiotic and it is, in my opinion, the best prebiotic out there because of all the things I've said. So it's the best thing to take if you want to support your own good guys. So your own probiotics that are already inside your body and have been there for a while and know how to deal with you and your environment, lifestyle and everything else. So it gives your microbiota a bit of a kick because it gives the ability to go those good guys to thrive and flourish in your own environment. And that obviously has a lot of different benefits coming from the microbiota. It improves diversity, which we all know is very important when it comes to microbiota. But in addition to that, they also, certain components of those beta galactose oligosaccharides will directly uh, interact with uh, the receptors and the immune cells down the uh, gastrointestinal lining. So it gives an additional benefit, which most or nearly all other prebiotics cannot do because prebiotics are mainly there to uh, feed the bacteria. They are food for, for, for microbiota. I don't want to say just bacteria. Uh, but beta oligosaccharides have that additional benefit that they can interact directly with the immune cells too, to an extent, anyway. Is there any particular organisms in the gut that are helped by beta galactose? Is there certain species or, or strains that the, the BGOS helps to boost up? Um, the uh, beta galactosidase is, is the enzyme required to deal with those. So there are a lot of different organisms that have them. But the main group that we really want to support are bifidobacteria. They are the guys. So the, the beta gases really target mainly uh, bifidobacteria, but not only. And of course, this is going to have a knock-on effect on other bacteria. But that's their main job, to, to support the growth and increase the numbers and metabolic activity of bifidobacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. People people often anecdotally mention benefits of GOS, something like sleep, stress, mental health. So a broad question is, is how how is the gut and the brain connected and how could GOS be benefiting in this regard? Well, the, the gut and brain are connected through this vagus nerve, as we know. Uh, so the gut produces a lot of compounds, including the neurotransmitters, etc., that are then transported via the blood barrier and interact with the brain. Um, nearly all microbiota in the gut will, or, or I don't want to say nearly all, actually all, every component of the microbiota or every member of the microbiota will produce something that can interact, uh, not just with the brain, but with every organ in the body uh, through the interaction with other um, members of the microbiota, but also mainly through the interaction with the immune system, because of course the immune system is also influential in the uh, response of the brain. Um, so that's that's how they are connected. They are connected through this uh, vagus nerve. And now the microbiota produces a lot of compounds that are beneficial. And in this case, bifidobacteria. And I don't think it's it, it, I don't think it's right to say that only bifidobacteria or lactobacilli produce those beneficial compounds. But what's right to say is that our knowledge today sits on something like that. That's where we have the most knowledge. So I am a firm believer that when it comes to when it comes just to pure science, academic work, then we can talk about lots of things. But when it comes to maybe giving an advice 
or giving something practical people can use and incorporate into daily lives, then we should really stay within the field where we have the most evidence. And today that's where we have the most evidence. So these guys are known to produce a variety of different compounds, including the neurotransmitters, they influence the hormones, etc. And that's how they are connected to the brain and not only brain, but also the endocrine function, which is extremely important within the human body. Yelena, that's a perfect segue to go into a particular study that you were involved in around Bifidobacterium brevi BB091109 around the inflammatory status and endocrine function of a postbiotic derived from this particular bacteria. Are you able to provide more information about the study and some of your key findings? I I need to just take a step back and 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 um, you know you, you may not be able to include all of this in 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 the actual podcast but never mind. Um I, I want to start with what is gut health before we lead on to on to that study. So gut health to a lot of people is all about microbiota. Gut health to me is is not just microbiota. It's you know all the things like digestion, absorption, absence of illness, and so on. But the key to achieving gut health um, are two two entities. One is microbiota, and one is barrier intestinal barrier function. So the good gut health depends on the interaction, um, on the not on the interaction, it depends on this intact gastrointestinal barrier and the fine-tuned communication between the microbiota and the immune system. Uh, I think I touched upon this barrier function earlier, uh, and I'm just going to say it again. So the the, the barrier function or this almost the, the, the mechanical barrier that's between the human and its outside environment and the microbiota sits on the outside almost, even though it's inside our gut, um, is, is, is crucial for literally everything that's going on in the body. Because if this barrier is intact and healthy, then almost it doesn't matter what goes on on the outside. But when the barrier is not doing so well, that's when the problems start within the gut, so locally, but also systemically in the brain or in the, uh, um, well, in any organ in the body, including the endocrine function. So why is this important? Well, it's important because of the inflammation. The low-grade inflammation, as we know today, uh, underpins literally everything that can go wrong in our body, from the wrinkles on our skin to Alzheimer's and uh, type 2 diabetes and, and anything, any, any, any chronic condition. The only things excluded are infectious infections and obviously genetic uh, disorders. So this buildup of the chronic low-grade inflammation comes from the environment. Uh, and the environment in this case is our lifestyle our diet and the microbiota that processes all of those components. So the microbiota drives the amount of inflammatory compounds that enter our body. And this gastrointestinal barrier is there to either prevent or let the entry of those compounds. So the inflammation, the, the low-grade inflammation, it builds up. It's a natural process that builds up in our body because that's what is causing aging. Uh, eventually, when we have too much of this low-grade inflammation, which we cannot avoid, I mean, that's what happens. We're human, we have expiry date. Uh, and I think we should have an expiry date. I, I don't mm -hmm. think humans should live forever because look what we've done with the planet. But that's another um, <laughs> topic. So um, as this low-grade inflammation accumulates, accumulate, eventually it gets to the point where we can't tolerate it anymore, where this barrier becomes porous and it becomes unable to, to deal with it. And that's where we uh, really notice the effect of aging. Um, so this uh, inflammation, low-grade inflammation is important. The barrier is, is extremely important. And in fact, the most important thing is how much we can tolerate. If we can tolerate a lot, we can stay young. By young, in this case, I mean healthy for longer, 
and we can deal with things. If we can't tolerate it or we have really quite inappropriate and terrible lifestyle and diet and so on, well, then we're going to get sick uh, very quickly. And I think that's what we're seeing today. We're living way longer than we did 20 or 50 or how many years ago. But actually, most people spend a lot of those years uh, being uh, sick, ill or requiring some sort of a um, treatment. So I've forgotten now what was the main question with my um, introduction. The postbiotic. The postbiotic, yes. So um, b knowing that the microbiota is influential uh, when it comes to interaction with the immune system and the keeping this barrier intact, and that the microbiota produces a variety of compounds, including the compounds that can prevent the buildup of this inflammation or the translocation of the inflammatory compounds into the uh, blood and into the human body, which I've just hopefully explained is very important, we've decided to concentrate on those specific compounds. Uh, so we've decided to extract uh, those specific compounds from one specific strain of uh, uh, bifidobacteria and maybe not so important. I mean, if it is, you can ask me why, why have we chosen that strain? Uh, but um, we've decided to extract those compounds. They are exopolysaccharides. So they are types of sugars, let's call them like that. Uh, for the simplest explanation that these bacteria produce, as indeed many other bacteria produce. And they have very, very specific uh, function because they, they act as um, TLR4 agonists. If I'm going too, too uh, technical here, please tell me. Uh, but basically, the, the lining of the human gut with the majority of the immune system is um, has all these different receptors, which are like uh, keyholes. And then the bacteria have all these different compounds that they produce. Uh, and these compounds, um, if they are the right ones, can either open or close or whatever the door. Uh, and these keys that the bacteria hold um, are um, depend the, the function and their functionality and how well they can interact interact with the immune system depend on their chemistry. So we've chosen to extract these uh, specific compounds that can affect a specific part of the immune system. And in this case, what they do is they block the receptors uh, down the gut lining. And by doing that, they reduce the amount of inflammatory compounds that enter the body. So in a way, what they're doing is they're fooling the immune system uh, that everything is fine, don't worry about what's going on on the outside, there's no need for you to go on to the uh, um, overload uh, and work too much and spend too much, you know, you, you, you are fine, everything is balanced. Uh, and that's what this specific postbiotic is uh, from Bifidobacterium brev. Knowing that it affects uh, inflammation or actually it reduces the amount of inflammation. We also um, knew or, or hypothesized uh, that it's going to have uh, an overall or a systemic effect, even though it does not enter the body um, on the amount of inflammatory compounds uh, and also hormones, um, specifically in females, because the, um, the, um, for example, cortisol, which is not specific to hormone to females, sorry, but cortisol is a stress hormone. Uh, and I think most people know that uh, when we're stressed, uh, this is when we increase the inflammation in the body. This is not good. Too much stress is not good for anyone. I, I think that's probably well known. Uh, but what it does, the stress increases this uh, low-grade inflammation in the body. So cortisol is one of the hormones that can be affected and uh, reduction of stress has many, very many effects on the brain and, and the rest of the body. But another interesting thing is that with females, 
Um, and me being the age I am, I, I had to concentrate a little bit on that. Um, when uh, when we go through the perimenopause and enter menopause, what happens is that uh, sex hormones, namely estrogens and progesterones, drop. And interestingly, at that same time, what happens in the female body is that we become more prone to inflammatory conditions. Um, and what, what, what happens then is actually that the barrier, that barrier function that I keep mentioning all the time becomes more porous, uh, more inflammatory compounds are let through. So it seems that the estrogen in a female body or the sex hormones in the female body at least uh, regulate the amount of inflammatory compounds that enter the uh, female body. So taking all of this into consideration, uh, we've decided to um, test this specific product in a female population. Um, age, I think, was uh, 40 to 55. So those would have been uh, of the age that are going through perimenopause or maybe have entered menopause. We haven't really uh, uh, asked them those kinds of questions um, and see the effect on well-known inflammatory markers um, such as certain cytokines and the C-reactive protein, for example, cortisol being an important important uh, hormone um, related to stress. And then, of course, the sex hormones, um, estrogens, progesterone. We also looked at the human growth hormone and the um, DHEA, which, which controls the, the amount of uh, sex hormones. And our hypothesis was that if we can line that, um, if we can prevent, uh, if with our substrate, this postbiotic, we can um, kind of block those receptors and therefore reduce the amount of inflammatory compounds that are coming from the diet lifestyle and everything we're doing in this life. Uh, we should be able to also reduce uh, in blood and in saliva um, the um, inflammatory compounds and the cortisol and at the same time in this female population increase the sex hormones that would naturally be dropping at this age and that's exactly what happened uh, in this study we have seen a significant effect uh, on all of those that i've just mentioned or most of them anyway the most important ones uh, and we have seen that in fact increase over the three month period that we have tested uh, we have seen it um, increased uh, over time, but also against the placebo. Uh, and we have also seen, interestingly, a positive effect in some of those uh, four weeks after we stopped the in intervention. Uh, and I think that's, that's probably, um, in my mind, that's always nice. Because for a lot of those compounds, for a lot of uh, uh, food ingredients, or the uh, microbiota modulators, once you stop taking it, you very quickly uh, go back to where you started. Uh, and I think one of the reasons for that is the thing I mentioned somewhere at the be beginning, the difficulty in, in modulating the microbiota and the advantage of this approach where you're bypassing that and interacting directly with the immune system is that you can um, have more of a benefit and a more of a lasting benefit uh, in the uh, body. Hope That's I answered really, that question. Oh, it's, that was that was brilliant, yeah. and it's incredibly fascinating to hear the outcomes of this study and the profound impact that it had on that particular female cohort that you chose. Just just a burning question: Why why do you think that the What's the mechanism behind, you could theorize on this, what, what's the mechanism, mechanism of action behind why the benefits endured? Because it was a postbiotic, so it's a certain chemical compound that's been ingested. But why does the benefits endure? Because what happens is, the, the, the thing I, I said earlier is that, you know, we, we're born... And then we start our descent towards death. 
uh, and during during uh, well we kind of we don't go like this you know we kind of go like this isn't it because we 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 have the childhood when everything is great and adolescence and then things start going down the hill um and so during during that period what what happens and how fast we go down that line depends on how much of that low grade inflammation we accumulate. Um, and actually that has an effect on our immune system and how well our immune system, which I do believe is the key really in the human body, in addition to the microbiota, which is outside, but the, the key to everything that goes on and how well we perform and everything else is the immune system. So, um, so, if you have something that can take away a little bit of that uh, or improve a little bit of that tolerance, give a little bit of a break, let's call it like that, to that immune system, then that effect should, in theory, and, I, and I'm all, only here, you know, this isn't proven, or maybe it is, but I don't know. Uh, it's certainly not something we've looked at, but this is just me thinking out loud, uh, because it would make sense to me. And uh, knowing how it does work, that um, you know, if you give a bit of a break, it's like if you if you do a lot of running or something, and then you know you give yourself a little bit of break. The chances are that the next day you're gonna perform better than if you just go out there every day um, and run. Uh, maybe not the best analogy, but that's where I'm leading. I think what it's doing is it's giving it a bit of a break from daily dealing with all those inflammatory compounds. And so the immune system can therefore perform a little bit better after a given period of time. But don't take my word on it. It's just a, it's just an idea. That's an amazing idea, Yelena. It's almost like there's a buildup of this chronic inflammation and then the postbiotic potentially manages to clear some of the inflammation away allowing the immune system to function more optimally, resulting in an enduring benefit. So that's that's amazing. And I have to ask you, why did you choose that particular strain? <laughs> so uh, we were set on um, finding a strain of bifidobacteria um, because of, as I said earlier, there's a lot of knowledge around those guys. And both George and I have worked with those bacteria extensively over the last 25, how many years. So it made sense to concentrate on them since we knew them quite well. So we were always going to choose bifidobacteria. Uh, and then we wanted to, uh, because we, we really, where we're going with this whole concept and where the, the company that we started this healthy aging, this thing that I mentioned, so not living forever, God forbid, but matching the lifespan with the health span, uh, living healthy for as long as we can. Um, and so we then uh, wanted to um, work with bifidobacteria that come from a healthy human who's also old, um, older, healthy human. And so a lot of different strains of bifidobacteria were extracted from our donor that we have chosen on a lot of different things, but mainly they had to be healthy and old. Um, and then they were tested for their ability to produce uh, different exopolysaccharides. And we have looked at these different exopolysaccharides and their ability to interact with different immune cells and so on. And this particular strain, Bifidobacterium breath, performed the best. And so that's why um, it was chosen. Wow. That, that, that's an incredible insight into the process of, of how you selected this particular organism from a, a healthy donor. Amazing, incredible, incredible insight. And I'd be remiss if I, if I didn't ask you about the connection between the gut and skin, because you you seem to be one of one of the of a very knowledgeable expert in this area. And and firstly, is there a connection between bifidobacteria brevum brevi B nine BB091109 and your Y skin. So we can talk about Y skin a little bit, but is there a connection between the two? 
Yes, well, that, uh, that uh, ingredient, the VMK223, or the postbiotic that's in the paper, is actually the Y skin. The Y skin. Uh, it's, gotcha. ingredient. it's exactly the same capsule uh, that is in the commercial product in Y skin that was tested in that study. Um, so, but but you see, most people, you know, and I said this before, you know, there's one thing doing science, there's completely another offering that product uh, to a consumer onto a market. So we believe, uh, and, and just if, if you can remember some of the things I said, this low-grade inflammation, the results we have shown, the fact that there is a delayed benefit of it, and what it all means is that it delays, in a way, aging. Um, it does not stop it. It does not make you look 10 or 20, I don't know how many years younger, if that's what you want. I think you need to have a plastic surgery or whatever is in the offer today. <laughs> but it delays that uh, aging effect. And when I say aging here, it's, I mean making you sick, making you unable to move, making you unable to, or not unable, but less able to think and so on. So, so that, that is what that VMK223 does, and that is what the results from that study are showing. It is delay, delaying that aging effect on, uh, in this case, on a female uh, body, but it does it in, in, in the male body as well, which is for the purpose of the study had to choose just one. Um, now, how is that connected to the skin? So the skin is the mirror of health, basically. Um, and whatever goes on, whatever wrong goes on inside the body, eventually is going to show on the skin. Uh, there's a very, very strong connection between the gut and the skin through this gut-skin axis, same as there is between gut and the brain and gut and the heart and metabolism and so on. Um, and these compounds that are produced in the gut will eventually get to the skin. How? Through the interaction with the immune system. So it is not a topic. Or, or hydration or something like that, that comes from the outside. It is pushing that benefit and the balanced immune system, the reduction of those inflammatory compounds um, overall in the body from the gut onto the skin. Now, one of the issues is, and, and, and I think maybe we're a bit ahead of ourselves when it comes to selling this product, is how do you explain this to people? And also, the idea is that if you're pushing it from the gut and you want to see that healthy skin or the delayed aging effect on the skin, then you should not be applying too many topical treatments. Because if you do that, then you have a bit of a, a problem, right? You're, you're trying to push things out from the gut onto the surface, but at the same time, you're applying something onto the surface and pushing it back in. Um, so, but that's what the, the, the Y skin is. It's that exact ingredient. And in addition to, to we have done other studies, um, these have not been published yet and they are more consumer orientated where we have looked at the effect on the skin and we have a significant effect on uh, skin components using the skin scanners over a period of three months. But that, but that was a different uh, study. Even in those females in that same study, we have looked at those components as well, but but they're not in, in um, they're not included in the publication that you have seen. Awesome. There was a slight delay in when you were speaking. Then, so you were mentioning something around the benefits being pushed from the gut onto the skin, but then the connection kind of broke a little bit. So maybe just explain a little bit how that mechanism works. So the, the gut and skin are um, connected through the immune system again. Uh, and everything that goes on in the gut eventually shows on the skin. Um, so if you, were, um, if you are able to balance 
and reduce the impact of those inflammatory compounds that we talked about earlier, eventually you're going to see the effect on the skin. Not making you look 10 or 20 years younger, that, that's not the effect, but making you look healthier, making you look, um, yeah, well, that, I think that's probably the, the, the best um, term to use. So making you look healthy, uh, delaying that aging effect that would come from inside your body and your lifestyle and your environment and your age and everything else. Perfect summary. I, th I think it, it lends to the creed of this concept called inflammaging. I think it's been circulating in that kind of wellness exactly. community for a long time. So this particular compound has the ability to perhaps mitigate some of those inflammaging risks. So that's perfect. We we better start to wrap. We're going to run out of time pretty soon. Just just a couple more questions. Being being someone, Dr. Yelena, on the forefront of this microbiome microbiota research, what what do you think is the the future direction? of this research and what are, what are you what are you hopeful about i am um, i do think we're we're at the at the crossroads at the moment where where a lot of effort um a lot of brains a lot of minds a lot of work and a lot of money has gone into the microbiota microbiome research uh, in the last 10 or so years and we've come to that realization that we have some issues with the modulation of the microbiota, which has its place and should never be abandoned. Um, I, I do believe that postbiotic concept or the similar application, so extracting the benefits from the microbiota, which we know and have, we don't have anything clearly and 100% defined, but, but we, we do know quite, we, we know enough at the moment to go down that route, is the way forward. And I do believe um, that a lot of labs and a lot of companies and a lot of people within this field are starting to, to at least think about that concept. So I see that as the as the next generation, let's call it like that, of works and the products and so on that will be coming onto the market. And that is until we're able to answer that question, what comprises healthy microbiota? And then we can go back to where we started 20 or 25 years ago of just modulating the microbiota in order to exert the benefit. That's an amazing. I'm so excited for the future. Do you think that the advancements in artificial intelligence technologies are going to help in this field? Definitely, uh, because I, I, I am, uh, I'm, you know, I have different opinions. I'm in favor of artificial intelligence for a lot of the things. For some others, I'm not. But in this case. Um, artificial intelligence, I think, is extremely beneficial because you can, one, deal with a lot of data, with a lot of information. Um, in our case, we are using artificial intelligence to feed um, different components, different data, different chemical structures in order to, and I think where artificial intelligence in this case is going to be most beneficial is for personalized nutrition and personalized um medicines or the treatments uh, because eventually when we get enough data uh, from from the response of a human and also enough data from all these different compounds we will be able to uh, design treatments and design products uh, that are on a personal basis taking into consideration genetics environment and all these complicated things that at the moment we can't really deal with so in that Think in that case, I think uh, artificial intelligence is not only beneficial, but will also become a useful and is already a useful tool. Amazing. In complete agreement, I think that with the advent ad advancing of these technologies, it it's such an exciting period of time to be alive. And I'm really excited to see where the, the technology leads us and what advancements in microbiome research 
result from that. Dr. Yelena, if there was one thing that someone could do for their gut health today, what would it be? I always, I get asked that question a lot. I get asked the question a lot of what should I eat? Um, my response is uh, that the one thing that one should have in life is balance. Um, and that goes for everything. It is, you've got to do and eat everything. And that has to include bad as well as the good aspects, because there isn't one thing that is so good for you other than sleeping, water, drinking water. You know, there are those basic things that you should be doing or eating every day. So um, moderation uh, and variety will result in that balance. And that is, I think, one thing that everyone should take and do Um but moderation and um, variety in order to have that balance. And if you have that balance in your body, with your lifestyle, with your diet, with everything else, your gut should be fine. Of course, if you suffer with certain conditions and so on, then, then you, you've got to concentrate on those. But we're talking about, you know, people who, who are supposedly healthy. Wonderful. What a perfect way to end the show. I'm deeply appreciative for you coming on and sharing some of this amazing cutting edge science to our audience. So thank you so much, Dr. Yelena Vulovic. I hope I've said that correctly. <laughs> I know it's all. <laughs> all good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Kribin. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank awesome. you. Thank you.